And now it's time for a preview of an upcoming game by Tom Vassell. Hey folks, there's a lot of trick-taking games in the world, starting from the very classic hearts and spades up to other ones where you usually play cards and try to win tricks and, and, and get points. Very few trick-taking games really step that much outside the box, and very few of them actually use kind of a board configuration. But today we're going to be taking a look at a, a, a preview of a game called Alliance's World Domination Trick-Taking Game, which uses cards in your hand and things on the table in combinations, and also allows you to, in the famous words of Brain, take over the world. Now, as I say with all my previews, what you're seeing here is still in prototype form. We're just showing you this so that you can get kind of a glimpse of how the game works. The game can be played with two, three, or four players. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a four-player game. And in a four-player game, there's partners. Uh, the two players who sit diagonally are partners with one another and uh, playing against each other. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be the first person to try to win two wars, uh, or basically two turns. The cards are going to be dealt out to each of the player. Let's take a look at the cards. There are different cards. There are, are three suits of cards. There are green economic cards in the deck. There are red war cards. And there are blue political cards. These cards are mostly numbered uh, from 2 to 12. Uh, but there is also cards, or 1 to 12, I'm sorry, there are also special cards in here that match a suit but have a special action when they're played. Once players are dealt their cards, they're going to look at their cards and then they're going to determine how aggressive they think they can be that turn. What they're going to say is how many of these places they think they will control at the end of their turn. They'll start the bidding and the lowest bid you can make is 10. Uh, and after you make a bid, you're also going to say which suit you want to be the dominant suit or the trump suit. So I could say 10 economic and then the next person might say 11 war and the next person might say pass and then they can't bid anymore. We keep going till one person wins. That person's team is then known as the aggressor and the other person is the defender. The aggressor it's their job to capture as many territories as they bid. So if they bid 11, they need to capture 11. You can see they start with 6. If, and the defender is simply there to stop them. The aggressor will start the first round. They can play any card they want from their hand. So here they play a blue one. Each other player must play the same color card if possible. If they don't have that color card, they can play anything they want. Whoever plays the highest card of the colored lead wins the trick unless a trump card was played, in which case the highest trump card wins the trick. Whoever wins the trick is going to place their token on the area that was being contested over. Each turn, whoever leads the trick is going to pick an area that's adjacent to one of the other areas they control. But you also, to win a trick, if you win a trick in a specific spot, the winning card must be higher than the defense of that sector. So for example here, if I win this with a war card, as long as it's higher than a one, I'm fine. If I win it with economic, as long as it's higher than a one, I'm fine. And if I win it with uh, politics though, it has to be at least a four. And so there will be different cards, uh, different spots on the board with different numbers that are on them. Now a player can never attack another player's territory until the uh, all all the empty spots have been taken. At that point, you can try to take a territory from somebody else. And you'll keep going until all the tricks have been played, and then we see if the aggressors have won, or the, lo or, or the defenders have won, and, and then whoever wins, they keep track of that, and then you play another round. The first team to win two rounds is the winner. Now, let's take a look at some of these special cards that are in the game. There's different cards that are available, special cards. This one here, uh, cancels all the war cards when you play this one. Uh, while this one here will double a war card's value, hopefully your uh, opponents. Or maybe you have one that cancels a special card that somebody else plays. Or one that cancels all but one of the economic cards. Or one that cancels all the economic cards. Or one that uh, adds the military value of the defense tile to the economic. So let's say, for example, someone is attacking this spot here 
and the economic value, you can see there is none, but I can add five to it. And if you had just won that with a uh, four economic card, you would no longer win that tile. There's also uh, cards which well, you triple the defensive value of the military on a tile or add the military of four tiles that you control and that becomes this card. You own four powerful ones like three, four, five, and six and you can have th this card could be an 18 red basically. And then there's cool cards that make everything pass around and other special cards that are involved in the game. Now, I just fully explained a four-player game, but there are some differences in a three- or two-player game. In a three-player game, there's three campaigns, and each time one person plays the Empire, and they're the only person who's going to score points that round, and so the other two players are pitted up against them. In a two-player game, it's a very different game uh, where the, ex the starting positions will look something similar to this and players will be drafting cards to arm themselves for their campaign and they're going to have a hand of 12 cards that they're going to be playing back and forth and you're going to be fighting over these different cards and playing cards trying to fight over the different spots. The, all three games have a similar feel to them although I would say the four player game is the closest to your typical trick taking game just with a board element involved. There are several things that are interesting in, about this game. Of course, I'm a fan of trick-taking games in general, and I like the fact that this one uses the board that's involved. It has the idea of these defensive values, so you have this kind of idea that you're conquering the world. And while most of the time the defensive value doesn't come into play because the cards played certainly will overwhelm it, occasionally it does. And if you can play the right card at the right time, you might not be able to win uh, territory, but you at least will stop your opponent from winning it. If neither person wins it, it, it stays blank. As a defender, you play a little bit differently, but you're simply trying to stop your opponent from taking tricks, period. While as the aggressor, you have kind of this, in your mind, you have to kind of guess how many tricks am I going to win? It reminds me of the bidding process of other trick-taking games like Brook and such, where you say, I'm going to try to get a certain amount of points. Here you're saying, I'm going to win a certain amount of tricks, and you have to take into account all the cards that are in the game, plus the special cards, plus the board position that's set up. So uh, if you're interested in trying this game out, trying a trick-taking game out, which you can conquer the world, plays two, three, or four players, and plays each of them fairly differently than the other ones, then this is a game that you'll be interested in. In just a moment, I'm going to show you the uh, Kickstarter information for this, uh, and you can back it. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah.